in this very uncertain world uh, right now because of uh, the things which are happening in the world many people do not really understand is god is in con is is god in control of everything and how can i learn to trust that god is in control i'm feeling so much down and i'm feeling down and i'm confused and the things are not working out the way i thought is god really in control i know this question is a is a question which many people are asking themselves right now especially because of what is happening in the world and and you're trying to question uh, the, the the control of god is god losing it is is satan working much more than god but uh, before we can learn uh, to trust that god is in control of all uh, of life's circumstances we have to answer four major questions we have to ask ourselves is god really in control that is point number 1 and how much control does god have and another point is uh if he is not in complete control then who is controlling or what is controlling all the things and how can i learn to trust that uh, god is in control and rest in that as a christian those are some questions that you need to ask yourself okay now in uh, in reality we have to understand that uh, the concept of the control of god over everything is called the sovereignty of god nothing gives us strength and confidence like an understanding of the sovereignty of god in our lives god's sovereignty is defined as his complete and total independent control over every creature, event, circumstance, and every moment in history. Subject to nothing, influenced by no one, absolutely independent, God does, does what he pleases, only as he pleases, always as he pleases. God is in complete control of every molecule in the universe at every moment and everything that happens is either caused or allowed by him for his own perfect purposes and glory. He is the same yesterday, today and forever and he controls everything. We have to understand that. Now, the book of Isaiah 14:24 let me just go here. It tells us, The Lord of hosts has sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And I have purposed, so shall it stand. So God, whatever he has said, will come to pass. It's not just you thinking that uh, my plans, if they don't work the way I thought, maybe think about Joseph in the Bible. Joseph saw a dream that his brothers were bowing unto him and his father and mother. And he saw that he would be a great man at some point. But Joseph could not understand why he was being sold as a slave, why he went to the prison, why all these things happened to him. He could not see the picture. Because many are the plans in a person's heart. You plan and say, oh, God told me I'll be a great musician. But all of a sudden, uh, no studio is, uh, is enjoying my music. Nobody's enjoying my music. And I wonder, why is it not happening? But it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. You may think about different people. Think about uh, 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 Paul, the apostle in the Bible. God had just told him that he's going to preach the whole world. And he gave him a great message the gospel of grace which was not given to anyone else it was the apostle paul only who was given that gospel and here comes paul and he's been imprisoned for the longest time i'm sure when he was there he was thinking now god you you give me a, such a good uh, a mission to go and preach this gospel of grace and then i'm here held in prison now how will i preach and i'm here Little did he, did he know that he wanted Paul to write the epistles. Now, those epistles are still preaching even to date when Paul is long dead and gone. You see, 
Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. God is always working. He's always doing things. Okay, And nothing is random or comes by chance. You may be in jail, you may be taken here, or something may happen, or you may lose your job or something, but nothing happens by chance, especially not in the lives of believers. Okay, What God purposed, it will happen. That one means to deliberately resolve to do something. God deliberately, he says that, Whatever he has planned, it will happen in your life. I you understand the point. So God has resolved to do what he will do. And nothing and no one can stand in that way. Okay? And he tells us in the book of uh, Isaiah 46, 10. Isaiah 46, verse 10. God tells us this as an assurance he says, declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are uh, not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You see, God, he declares things. He gave us the book of Revelation to tell us the things which are to come. He gave us different books to tell us Jesus will be coming. He will be coming to save the world. But people did not understand because they don't want to read the word of God. And even if they read, they did not understand because they did not have the Holy Spirit. You see, God always gives and declares what he's going to do. And nothing can come in that uh, 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 thing. He's always working behind the scenes. Okay? He's always working behind the scenes. And these are powerful and purposeful God. And the 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 the, uh, the promise that he gives us that is in control of everything what you see and what you don't see okay and this one should bring us to a great comfort and they help us to alleviate our fears but now how exactly how exactly uh, or how much control does god have how exactly does he do it and how much control does he have God's total sovereignty over all creation directly contradicts the philosophy of uh, open theism, which states that God doesn't know what's going to happen in the future anymore than we do. So he has to constantly be changing his plans and reacting to what the sinful creatures do as they exercise their free will. God is not finding out what is going to happen as, in, uh, as the events are unfolding. No. That's not what he's doing. He's continuously active, running things. God is behind the scenes running things. Okay? He's running things here and here and, uh, and now and all the time. He's running things. But to think that God needs our cooperation, uh, our, our help, or the existence of our free will to bring his plans to pass, that one puts... Uh, puts us in control over God and which makes us to be God and we are not God my friends okay we are not God the Bible tells us hmm? where have we had that lie before have you ever had the lie of uh, we, someone trying to be God have you ever had that lie where have you had that kind of lie before Genesis 3 Verse 5, have you ever had that kind of lie where you try to be God and you try to say, no, uh, let me help God in some way. For God does know that in the day that you uh, that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as God. You see, if you try to say, oh, I'm helping God, you're now trying to be God. Knowing good and evil, huh? that's, that's what you're trying to do, right? When you try to say, oh, uh, this is a blah, 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 blah. You have to understand, you're not God. You're not God. If Paul could have sat in that prison and said, oh, now I, I think, let me let me just be corrupt and uh, give something, uh, you know, give something small, some money and bribe these people so that I can go out and uh, preach the gospel. That could not have been the plan of God. God was behind the scene working and he was saying, Paul, now your ministry outside is done. I just want you to... Uh, uh, I just want you to write those letters and then after that your head is cut off and that's it. Come come over. Think about John the Baptist. He had just 
seen Jesus and he said, Behold the Lamb of God is here and he baptized him. And just days later, John the Baptist is held in prison. And after being held in prison, he's there so long and until he sends some disciples and tells them, just go and ask that man, is he really the Jesus we are waiting for or is there another one who is coming? You see, the kind of fleshly thoughts we can have until you're like, ah, yes, I, I, God told me the one who adore will come and the Holy Spirit. And yes, he's him, but ah, is it really him? Because he could not understand that God was acting behind the scenes. And after that, he didn't know that uh, his work was done. It was only to show Jesus Christ. And then when the ministry of Jesus starts, there won't be two ministries, the ministry of John the Baptist and the ministry of Jesus. His work was done. His head was to be cut off. And that was it. And John the Baptist finished. And now another ministry of Jesus starts. You see, God has a way to do his things. Okay? And our will, okay? Our will is only to... Uh, 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 to, to follow him our idea is just to follow him and listen to him and do what he asks us nothing else okay see what the bible says here in the book of daniel the book of daniel uh, 4 verse uh, 35 okay it says says here and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he does according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What thou doest thou? There is no one who can tell God, God, why, why did you take my children? Why did my mother have to die or my father have to die or my sister? Or oh, this has to happen. God, why did this have to happen? God knows and he has a plan for everything. Even what is happening right now in the world and people are so much scared and, and Christians are asking, oh, no, these people are forcing us into this thing. We don't want and blah, blah, blah. All those God, God, God is in control. He's allowing these things because he has a plan. Don't think that he has he's lost it. No, God has not lost it. Okay? And no one's free will will triumph the sovereignty of God. Okay, now think about Job. Okay, some people will find it appealing to think that Satan had control over a certain amount of life and that God is constantly revising his plans to accommodate certain tricks. The book of Job is a clear illustration of just who has the sovereign power and who doesn't have it. Satan doesn't have that sovereign power. Remember, Satan came to God and, uh, 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 and uh, in fact, he said to God that, can you give me the, can you allow me to go and uh, tempt Job? Satan had to ask God for that permission. Okay? So God gave Satan permission to do certain things to Job, but no more. He told him, you can go and do anything else, but don't touch his life. Do you see, Job could be out there thinking, oh, what, what is happening to me? Or maybe, oh, God has forgotten me. Or maybe Satan has, has had it now. This time is, is, is one. It's, it's not like that. And that's why we are told to be like Job. We, we stay and we say whether we live, or whether we die, or whatever we have, we happens to us, God knows. You understand the point? Just go and read the, the whole story in Job 1, uh, verse 6 to 22. Okay? So do you think Satan could do more than that? Do you think Satan could take the life of Job? No, he couldn't. God is in control over Satan and his demons who try to thwart God's plans at every step. Okay? Now, Another thing you have to understand that Satan knew from the Old Testament that God's plan was for Jesus to come to the earth, be betrayed, and be crucified and resurrected, and to provide salvation for millions. And if there was any way to keep that from happening, Satan would have done it. But there was no way. If just one of the hundreds of prophecies about the Messiah could have been caused by Satan to fail, to come to pass, then the whole thing would have collapsed. But the number 
uh, the numbers of independent free will decisions made by thousands of people were designed by God to, pre to bring his plan to pass in exactly the way he had planned it from the beginning. And Satan could not do anything about it. Remember Jesus, he was crucified on the night of Passover to become our Passover lamb. God had planned it way back, thousands of years. And no one could change that. He resurrected on the first fruits to be our first fruits from the dead. And exactly no one could change that. His bones were not broken. Just as the Bible says that uh, uh, the, the son of man, his bones would not be broken. Exactly. The other two thieves, their bones were broken. Even those who are guarding the tomb, they could not be able to guard it anymore because God had planned that he would rise at that time. And there was no way other. You see, you think that God is not in control? He's in control. Even the things which happen right now, God is in control. Okay? Jesus was delivered by the uh, determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. Okay? There's something which you call the foreknowledge of God. He knows the present, he knows the past, he knows the future. That is what we call the foreknowledge of God in the book of Acts uh, 2, verse uh, 23. It tells us about this. Acts 2, 23 says, Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. Jesus was, not determ uh, was delivered before uh, those wicked hands because God did not know. No, it was the foreknowledge of God. You have taken, and by the wicked hands have crucified and slain. God knew some people who are wicked, and he will use them. He will allow them to do this so that deliverance can come. Think about, uh, think about um, which example I give you. Think about Pharaoh in, in Egypt. God knew that Pharaoh would, uh, you know, he would... Uh, not agree the children of Israel to go to their land. And uh, he knew it. And that's why he even hardened their, his heart. He just knew, okay, I give you a chance. You refuse. The ch second chance you refuse, God hardens your heart and says, okay, now refuse completely. So that when he's running after them in the Red Sea, what happened? They were all killed in the Red Sea. All killed, all those Egyptians. And the children of Israel passed so that God could be able to show his glory. So God is in the foreknowledge of everything. He knows everything. Okay? God knows everything. Your past, future, and present. And no action by the Romans or the Pharisees or Judas or anyone that kept God's plan from the unfolding, uh, uh, from unfolding exactly the way he purposed it from before the foundation of the world. Nobody could be able to change that plan. Judas had to do what he did. Herod had to do what he did because that was already in the foreknowledge of God. And Ephesians 1 says that we are chosen in him before the world was even created. Before the world was created, we were in the mind of God to be saved by faith in Christ. And that means God needs together Satan's rebellion, Adam and Eve's sin, he knew it. The fall of the human race, he knew it. The death of uh, and crucifixion of Christ, he knew it. And all seeming, uh, seemingly terrible events which occurred in the Bible, all which were there to save us before he even created us, he knew. Let me give you a good, perfect example of God working all things together for good. The Bible says in the book of Romans 8, verse 28, he talks about this. God says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. You see, this is a good explanation that everything which happens in our lives, even the way you're behaving right now, even you watching this video, God knew that one day, today, you'll be here sitting and watching this video. Personally, my life is a testimony. My life purely is a testimony. I was lost 
lost as a golf ball in high weight. I didn't know anything. I was confused, lost. I was a drunkard. I was just any other person out there who did not understand anything. But God knew one day he's allowing that so that I, when I come to preach, when he'll call me for his ministry to come and preach, I will know what I'm talking about. When I tell a drunkard, hey guys, this one is not what God plan is. I've been there. I've seen it. God called people. Think about the Apostle Paul. He was always persecuting Christians and doing wrong things. And, and he followed a wrong doctrine. And when others are trying to follow that law which he was following, he would tell them, guys, please listen. I've been there. I've been a Pharisee, Pharisee myself. I know these things. But God used me because he saw. He saw the plan that he wanted for me. He, he had the foreknowledge that one day, one time, I would change. And he let me do all those things. So that even as I preach, I can be able to tell people, come out from the law. Do what is right. I've been there and I've done that. You see, God, God works in very mysterious ways. You see, it's very good to understand that uh, you can rest in the fact that God is in control. Which means you can face the things that are out of your control and out of your knowledge and out of those kind of things that are really pushing you out. And you wonder and you ask yourself, why did this have to happen? Because God is unlimited in power. He is unrivaled in majesty and not thwarted by anything outside himself. Our God is in complete control of all circumstances, causing or allowing them for his own good and purpose and plan to be fulfilled exactly as he has foreordained. God is in total, complete control. And uh, finally, as I conclude, the only way to trust in God's sovereign control and rest is to know God. Okay? To know God and to know his attributes. You know, there's something called the attributes of God and know what he has done in the past and this builds confidence in him when you understand god okay when you understand god you will be strong think about daniel <clears throat> in the book of daniel 11 uh 32 it says it says something here which you have to understand and such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries but the people Look at here. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Do you know your God? You know, knowing God is not just understanding there is a God. It's understanding these attributes of God. You understand that God is merciful. God is trans uh, transcendent, incapable of uh, doing sin and all those kind of things. Forgiving, trustworthy, provider, present, omnipresent infallible, loving, righteous, omnipotent, self-existent. You, you understand all these attributes of God. Once you understand God, my friend, you'll have a lot of confidence. Okay? You'll have a lot, a lot of confidence. God is not a God who doesn't really care about it. He's a caring God. And we can rejoice in our God's sovereignty because it it is overshadowed by his goodness, his love, his mercy, his compassion, his faithfulness, and his holiness. When you understand God, you'll not be doing things the same way. When Paul understood God, he was like, guys, I count myself as dung. My life is nothing so that I can win God. I count everything that I have nothing. Think about the other apostles. They were all died in a very weird and funny manner. All of them, they were killed and all those things which happened to them. Do you think those people could die for nothing that they don't believe? Do you think they could die for nothing? No. They knew that for sure their God is true. They knew the attributes of God. They understood them. It's really important for you to know God. We, we cannot trust someone that we don't know. You can live with your wife if you don't know her. You don't understand if she's a murderer or she's a good person. You have to understand the person that you are with. That's why salvation 
it's all about is a relationship it's not just uh, some prayer some mantra you go and say or some switch you go and press or some sinner's prayer you say and then after you say that sinner's prayer you're saved now and you can go and live like a thief no no it doesn't work like that do you get married to your wife and then you just put on the ring and say those vows and uh, everybody goes his own way no that's not why you're married you're married to christ so that you can have a relationship with him you're the bride of Christ. You must know the person that you're married to. That's what we call knowing God. And that's why Jesus says, on that day he will tell many, away from me, I never knew you. Why? Because you don't know him and he doesn't know you. You don't communicate. You don't have any fellowship. You don't even care about each other. There's nothing. You just said a prayer and left. It was all in your mind. It was not in your heart. Are you seeing the point? We cannot trust someone that we don't know. And there's only one way to know God, through his word. You can only know God through his word. He's really important. Through the word of God, you can know him. And there's no magic formula to make us spiritual giants overnight. You see, people think, oh, you lay hands on me and I will speak in tongues and I'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. There's nothing like that. Like, come on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You, you hear, you hear, and you hear, and you start knowing God, and you start walking with God. Okay? There's no some magic formula which makes us spiritual people. No mystical prayer that you can pray three times a day like the, the Muslims do. Praying three times a day, 12 times a, a month. It's just like those prayers that Catholics do. The Catholics, what are they also always doing? Mantras. Repetition, say 10 Hail Marys, 20 Our Fathers. Come on, God is not a software. He's not a software that you can uh, doing, do some mystical prayers three times a day, four times a day. It's like you're taking medicine to mature yourself. No. You can't build your faith by those kind of stuff. Or make yourself tower of strength and confidence by, by some prayers or some things that you do. And you just say, I won't know God, but I'll just press this button. No, it's a relationship. There's only the Bible. The Bible, read the Bible. God speaks to you through the Bible, and you speak to him through prayer. You pray, and he speaks to you. He answers you through the Bible. This is a single source of power that will change your life from the inside out. But it takes effort, my friends, and diligence and everyday effort to know the God who controls everything. And if we, we drink deeply of his word and let it fill our minds and hearts, the sovereignty of God will become clear to us. And, and we will rejoice in it because we will, know, we will know intimately and trust completely the God who controls all things for his perfect purpose. That's what I can tell you, my friends, concerning God. He's in control of everything. And unless you know him, you can never understand these things. Because the Bible tells us that spiritual things are spiritually discerned. And a natural man cannot comprehend the things of God because they don't know him. The only way you can know Christ is through the gospel, through his word. You believe the gospel, you get saved, and then after that, you start reading the, his word. And after that, you'll be filled by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit does not come on one day through some laying of hands and you falling and, uh, and rolling like a, like a serpent. That's not how the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit comes by reading his word. Okay? Read the word of God. Pray every day. Have a relationship with God every day. And you will know God. And you'll be filled by the Holy Spirit. Do you know God, are you even saved? The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. How did Christ die? He died by shedding his blood. There are five things that you need to understand before you get saved. Five things for you to understand before you get saved. Number one, you have to understand that you're lost. Unless someone knows that he's lost, he can't try to find the way. 
if you think you still know the way then uh, it's very hard for you to be saved you have to understand that man i'm lost i'm lost i don't know where i am i don't know if i'm going to heaven for sure i'm really lost and then the second thing that you need to do is to hear the gospel the bible says in the book of romans how will they hear without a preacher thank god there are so many preachers out there like the way i'm doing here on youtube even in your local church or even someone god will always bring you someone to tell you the gospel and the next thing is to understand the gospel the gospel is not a prayer that you just go and pray or uh, switch a button or a sinner's prayer or something that you do the gospel is all about understanding so that you can believe from your heart you don't believe from your mind but you believe from your heart so that the, the after understanding the fourth thing is believe from your heart after you have understood and the fifth thing is confess what you have believed okay confess in a prayer just tell god what you believed so what is the gospel the gospel is found in 1 corinthians 15:1 through 4 and is all about how that christ died for our sins he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures he died for your sins so that if you believe in him you'll not perish but you'll have everlasting life do you believe him do you believe him do you understand what he did he was you are the one who was supposed to be on this cross but jesus said no 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 don't put him there let me stay there while you are still sinners christ died for us so that to whoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life brothers and sisters you have to understand that fact and once you understand it all you need to do is tell jesus what you have understood tell him jesus i understand that you died for my sins that you were buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures and i believe you lord and i accept that payment that atonement by faith be my lord and savior and change my life completely and for sure he will do exactly that hope this has been a blessing to you hope uh, it has touched your life in some way or another to know that god for sure is in control if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and also you can subscribe to watch more videos which we post every day and also you can uh, uh hit the notification bell so that you don't uh, miss new videos which we post you can always be notified and likewise at the description below we have a couple of other channels uh, outside youtube where you can go and see what we do Uh, hope you'll have a good time and hope this message has been a blessing to you have a good time